Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Stewart. I'm one of the business development managers here at Buki. Today, I'll be moderating the second installment of Supercritical Chats, where we demystify supercritical fluid chromatography. To help with this, we have my colleague, Maddie Hogan, joining us again. For those of you who weren't, who weren't with us last time, Maddie is our resident chromatography specialist, and she is back with us to chat about the benefits of using CO2 as a solvent for chromatography. Thanks, Michael. Um, it's really nice to be back, and I'm excited to talk about all the benefits CO2 can bring to people's chromatography practices. Cool. Uh, just to recap, You've already discussed with Stephen the technology behind the SFC system in our previous installment, uh, which will be linked here for those who missed it. Uh, the key point of the system is that we utilize CO2 in its supercritical state as a mobile phase for chromatographic separations. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, supercritical CO2 has some really interesting properties when it comes to solubility and viscosity, um, but it makes it a great medium um, as a mobile phase for separations. Uh, and the Sepiatech Buki SFC system is designed to deliver that CO2 from a liquid form and keep it in that sub to supercritical state um, for the duration of the purification. Great. So can we start from the very beginning, um, getting a lab set up uh, to use CO2? How would one go about doing that? Right. So it's important to find out how much CO2 you're going to be using. It's really dependent on how much CO2 you're going to need um, for your process and how much you can keep in the lab. Um, for example, you wouldn't be using a drum of hexane to purify just a couple milligrams of product. Um, it's a similar concept for CO2. OK, that makes sense. Uh, let's take the SFC 50, for example. That's the, the smallest instrument. It can accommodate columns between 4.6 and 20 millimeter ID, kind of best suited for method scouting and milligrams to gram scale purifications. Uh, what kind of CO2 system are we looking at to support that instrument? Right, so for that system, um, really just a pressurized cylinder of CO2 can, um, equipped with a dip tube uh, would work perfectly fine for that. It's The cylinder itself is roughly the same size as a typical, say, nitrogen tank, and it comes equipped with different um, or similar sized fittings. Uh, so it's pretty easy to hook up and kind of get going with right away. That doesn't sound too complicated. Um, I know that you're currently setting up an SFC 50 instrument um, in the Buki lab in Newcastle, Delaware. Um, what are the hard costs associated with that instrument setup? Right. So looking at the total CO2 system that we're getting set up with the SFC 50, um, I think the cylinder of CO2, the regulator and the fittings um, is going to be in the range of about two hundred dollars. So not terrible, um, actually pretty decent. And the cost of the CO2 high pressure cylinder itself is going to be in the range of forty nine to sixty two dollars um, and that cylinder contains about 50 pounds of co2 um, there's a little delivery cost and i expect that cylinder at the uh, scale we're going to be running is going to last me about a week so i might have a backup cylinder in the lab just in case okay so these costs are very much in line with with setting up other normal pieces of laboratory equipment how do the costs for the sfc 50 system compare to like the 250 system Right. So when you're using the SFC 250 system, you have a lot more capacity. You can fit a bigger column on. Um, you're going to have more throughput, which means you're going to be using more CO2. Um, so you might want the ability to use multiple tanks. And in that case, you might need a switching system to switch between the different high pressure cylinders. Uh, that switching system is going to be in the range of 35 to 40 K. Um, and that, that would be good for a 250 or maybe multiple SFC 50s. Um, if you're looking for even higher throughput, say you have multiple SFC 250s in your lab, um, you might look into using doers. Doers of CO2, while not pressurized, um, still contain uh, up to 376 pounds of CO2. Um, so that's quite a lot of CO2 to have on hand. You just need to add a booster pump and something like that system is going to run you around 100k with installation and then when you start getting into you know you have multiple instruments and multiple labs you think you want to plumb co2 um, in your building um, that can start looking at maybe around 200k and beyond 
Okay, so uh, back to the the two hundred dollar SFC uh, SFC fifty instrument. That's kind of your method scouting, small purifications. Um, and then really thirty five to forty k for uh, two fifty. Um, what are the advantages to implementing SFC in a laboratory uh, compared to other liquid chromatography purification approaches? Yeah, so you know we looked at the upfront costs. Um, you know we might as well look at you know what cost savings we're going to be getting by using the SFC. Uh, the biggest one is less solvent use. SFCs use much less solvent, which means you're going to have less solvent stored in the lab and your chemists are going to have a lot safer exposure level because you aren't going to have solvent vapor um, in the same quantities that you'd have before. Um, of course, using less solvent means you're generating less waste. You're saving on hazardous waste removal costs um, and also having to store it, um, which is great. SFC is roughly two to three times faster than PrEP HPLC. Um, so you're looking at um, faster run times, higher throughput. Um, you can do this for both achiral and chiral separations. And the fractions that you collect are actually only in really organic modifier, um, a small amount of organic modifier. But that means you're not having to spend a lot of time trying to remove water from your final product. Okay, so so to recap, it's cheaper to run because of the reduced solvent cost. Uh, from a material purification standpoint, it's two to three times faster than PrEP HPLC. Um, and the samples will elute with minimal organic solvent, meaning the concentration processes are all faster and you generate much less liquid solvent waste. Um, with these factors in mind, what's the ideal use case for the SFC50 instrument versus the 250 and even the 660 instrument? Right, so it kind of comes down to the size of the columns that you can use on these instruments. Like we said before, the 50 is great for that semi-prep to small prep size, 4.6 to 20 millimeters. Um, that is really good for method scouting, small scale purifications. Let's say you have um, multiple uh, targets, um, all kind of with small amounts. I would say the 50 is a great instrument for that. Um, if you're looking to have a little bit more versatility, say, like the from small um, product amounts all the way up to maybe a kilo, a kilogram, um, the 250 is a really great instrument for that. It's versatile. Um, we kind of view it as our workhorse instrument. Um, and then when we talk about the 660, you know, you can fit up to a 50 millimeter column on that instrument. So you're looking at really high sample throughput. These are for kind of our manufacturing and production environments that really need to get through a lot of sample quickly. Okay. Uh, are there specific applications or industries where SFC has demonstrated um, a higher potential for ROI? Yeah, definitely. So the first one that comes to mind is pharma. You know, uh, chiral separations are really important to pharma these days. Um, really, really important to do them fast. And SFC provides both a fast and easy method um, or ability to separate these chiral compounds. And, you know, um, first to market is a really big deal in drug discovery. And the SFC is really going to help contribute to that goal. Another great industry that I think really uh, utilizes SFC to its full advantage is the flavor industry. Um, isolating volatile um, terpenoid flavor compounds that actually can be chiral in nature, um, SFC is a great tool for that. Um, and lastly, but not least, is the cannabis industry. So a huge amount of ethanol is needed to purify cannabis uh, normally, and that can be replaced by CO2. And the great thing about replacing ethanol with CO2 is that the CO2 that we use to separate and purify um, that cannabinoid mixture is food grade. So it's considered safe for human consumption. Let's stop there for a moment. You mentioned that the Buki SFC uh, instrument only requires food grade instead of medical grade. How does food grade CO2 compare to medical grade? Right. So food grade, um, first of all, is much more affordable than uh, medical or um, sometimes they call it supercritical grade. But when you're actually looking at the purity difference between those two grades, it's only about 0.01 percent. Um, so it's not making a big difference. Um, most users uh, exclusively use food grade CO2. Great. So that's great news that we can use food grade. 
How does the throughput and efficiency of SFC generally compare to other chromatographic techniques? Right. So, like we mentioned before, SFC is two to three times faster than PrEP HPLC. So, teams can reach timelines easily and actually really increase the scale of these purifications that maybe they didn't have um, as much accessibility to on reverse phase PrEP HPLC. Um, also, a lot of SFC methods utilize an isocratic gradient instead of um, a traditional um, A increasing to B um, gradient. So that usually increases the process or decreases the processing time. Um, you're also looking at one half to one eighth of the solvent in SFC versus PrEP HPLC. So the dry down concentration time is much, much faster on the back end of the purification. Um, so you're not only saving time, you're saving solvent, um, and you know, you're really increasing the throughput of your team. Sounds great. Um, what are some of the hard cost savings with CO2? How does the cost of CO2 compare to the cost of traditional liquid uh, chroma, chromatography solvents? Right. So I did a quick browse of the Sigma Aldrich catalog and, uh, you know, the price of HPLC grade LC solvents um, are pretty expensive. HPLC grade means they're very pure, which is required for a lot of these instruments. Um, and some of the prices are quite high. Um, ethanol and acetonitrile, for example, um, they range $430, $524 for just a four liter um, bottle of those solvents. Wow. And, and how does that compare to food grade CO2? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. I wasn't prepared to do math here today, Michael. <laughs> I cheated and did it ahead of time. With your your sixty dollars per fifty pounds, it works out to about three dollars and twenty four cents uh, for four liters of of food grade CO two. So three dollars and twenty four cents versus four or five hundred dollars, it's you know significantly cheaper there. Significantly. Um, are there any regulatory safety or compliance factors that need to be considered when implementing SFC in a lab, and how do these overall how do these um, considerations impact the overall ROI? Right. So um, health and safety and environment um, people and companies really love CO2 in the lab because there actually isn't as much regulatory um, standards for CO2 than other organic solvents. And that's just because it's much it's much less hazardous and um, it's also not flammable. So really the only thing that we suggest is installing a co2 monitor in the lab this monitor usually goes about one to two feet um, off floor level and uh, this is because co2 is much denser than air um, so you just have one monitor maybe two monitors in your lab and those would be connected to both an audible and a visual alarm um, that's just in case if the lab was unattended, there might be a CO2 leak. Um, you can see and hear that maybe the lab needs to be ventilated. But overall, um, much, much, much safer to keep quantities of CO2 than, say, quantities of methanol in your lab. Absolutely. Um, that all sounds very promising. Um, the upfront costs seem very reasonable, especially for the SFC50 instrument. And long term, our customers will be benefiting from reduced solvent cost, reduced solvent exposure, and faster chromatography. Right. And the great thing is, is that this instrument is really straightforward to use, um, really straightforward to learn to use. It has a really small footprint, um, which is great. And you can even use a lot of the LC columns that you already have in your lab. Yeah. How do our customers learn more about Buki SFC instruments? So they can go to our website at www.buki.com and search for SFC, or they can give you a call. Yeah, be great to talk to the, our customers about their specific application and needs to determine if a feasibility study is appropriate for their material. Definitely. Um, well, it was great having you here today, Michael. Always enjoy talking SFC with you. Yeah, it's been great learning more about the SFC installation process, including talking about ROI and some of the benefits associated with utilizing CO2 as a mobile phase uh, for purification-focused chromatography. Definitely. 
Well, I think that wraps us up for today. Um, be sure to tune in next time for another super critical chat. Um, I think the next session will be with business development manager, Jared Mayo. Have a great Sounds day, great. Michael. Yeah, have a great day, Maddie. Bye.